time on the fast lane truck, we took on the Ike Gauntlet with three of the newest and best pickups on the market. And we had the Toyota Tundra on it. So today I've got Kent, Mr. Truck, who's gonna help me. And what are you driving? I'm driving this F-150 Ford with Echo Boost V6. The Echo Boost? Yep, betcha, two, two turbos. Two turbos. Direct injection. Direct injection up here at 11,000 feet of elevation. I think you've got a huge advantage. Coming up next on the Fast Lane Truck. Pickup beds are not the same, and this is important if you're using it as a work truck, right, Kent? Right, work truck or trailers, gooseneck, fifth wheel. Style. Yeah. So, what's special about the Ford? Well, <laughs> back in 2004, they thought they wanted a taller truck bed. You know, they like to win those contests of the largest cargo volume. Yeah. As if people haul corn and coal in these things, I, whatever. But that's what they did. So they got these talls. They raised them up almost four inches back then. All right. So shall we so, measure? Yeah. Now they're probably three inches. So the well, Ford is uh, 23 inches. Yeah, 23 inches. That's not this, easy. I mean, no, I'm tall. You, you I can barely reach, reach there. Can right, you, reach you can't it? reach tools. No, I can't touch the floor. And that's a problem. If you're trying to get a shovel, a toolbox, and then, like, see, actually, this truck from here to the ground is taller than a dually 350. It's a tall truck. It's a tall truck. And so how do you do this with trailers? When you get a fifth wheel in here or a gooseneck ball, so they're smaller trailers, but this bed rail gets within two inches of the, the neck. And that so, means you hit these things, yeah. And so Ford did that first, and I, I you know, I, that's why I don't like that tall bit, but they, they do this volume thing. All right, let's try the Chevy. Come okay. on over. Let's, let's see what Chevy's done. All right, I'll measure, I'll see your van, I'll, I'll measure this. <laughs> All right, this one is, well, look at that, 21 and a half. Yeah. So it's an inch and a half shorter than the Ford. Yeah, so you can, you can actually reach in this and you can touch the floor. Of course, the Ford has taller wheels on it, we'll give it credit for that, but this one is usable. And it's better for trailers because you have that extra rent, those extra inches underneath the gooseneck or the, the canopy of the fifth wheel, which is a big deal in trailers because that's a big problem is that bed rail height on a trailer, on right. a gooseneck style. We also have this, which is nice. That's kind of a nice feature, this step that they put in the 2014 model so you can get yeah. up here so that even if you're a little shorter, you can then potentially reach right, right, down exactly. in here. That's All right, let's try the Toyota. Cool. Let's see what the verdict is on that. On Toyota, and this, this bigger truck, which... When it came out in 2007, they thought, hey, Ford did it, so we're going to do it. And they did it, and what they told me is for the body lines. It matches their crew cab better, so they raised it up for that purpose. 22 and a half. 22 so and a half. It's and somewhere we'll... between the Ford and the Chevy. Yeah, and Chevy did raise it an inch over the last few years. But, uh, yeah. It's yeah. hard, too. Yeah, this is hard. You know, you can, the average person can't reach the floor. So if you're using it as a work truck or you're using it even to get a toolbox or things out of it, you got to have some kind of step system or running board or climb on your knees on a tailgate. F-150, twin turbos, the Echo Boost, it's 3.5, intercooled. This is the highest torque rating in the class. This is 420 foot-pounds of torque, 365 horsepower, but the torque range comes on at 2,500 RPMs, like a diesel. Kent, I got a bad feeling about this, and by bad I mean you're gonna win this because I think this will actually exceed the speed limit going up the I Gauntlet, or potentially. It wouldn't surprise me, it wouldn't surprise me. One of the great things about the F-150 is this middle line right there. Look at that, it shows me exactly where I need to line up to get this trailer hooked up. Isn't that cool? Look at that, right underneath it. This is so cool. Boom, right there. How's that? I think I nailed it. That is a really neat feature when you're towing. This thing. Oh, look at that! Yeah, Check look at that, that out! Look at that, you can move that left to right to yeah. precisely. I thought I nailed it, I guess I was off just no, a little just bit. Just a little bit. But not much. 
That's why you're Mr. Truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you see how much this thing squats, because that's a big difference in how they handle, how they break, now where we, your headlights are. It's... Now we have the car balanced on the trailer, so it shouldn't be nose heavy or it shouldn't be tail heavy. It's right where it should be. Right, if you want to film back on the equalizer between the springs, you'll see that the equalizer on the two lee springs is level. So we do have a good balance, good weight distributing on this trailer. I can tell uh, it's squatting down, it's going down. Yeah, we're going downhill. How many inches do you think? I'm going to guess four, but I could be off. All right, <laughs> all right. I'm going to say three, okay. just to keep it interesting. Yeah, you're probably going to win this bet. All right, let's go find out. Are you? Are we off? Yeah, you're all right. off. All right, let's come on. Come on, with, come on with me. And you can see that picture of that jack phone they have to yeah, hold on, let me get this. All right, Ken, you said four. Yeah. It was 39, and we are at uh, 36, 37. So it's three inches. Guess who got it right? Good job, Roman. <laughs> three inches. So hopefully our headlights aren't shining too high up. What do you think? Are they shining up high? Three inches. That's, yeah. you know, 30 feet out there. You're probably... Yeah, blinding somebody. Yeah, at least three feet up in the air. Let there be light. I can see again. So you can see us. And right now, we are about to head down the Ike Gauntlet in the Ford F-150 EcoBoost with Mr. Truck, Kent behind the wheel, me in the child seat, uncomfortable child <laughs> middle seat back here, and Nathan riding shotgun. Or do you say EcoBoost, Kent? I, I guess I, I'd say the wrong thing. I should say EcoBoost. Eventually, it'll get me trained. No, there's, you know what? There's no proper way to say it. Nathan has a story about that. Yes, I do. There was a uh, representative from Ford who was in Denver representing a vehicle, and that person kept saying Echo, Echo, Echo. And I said, you know, Echo has a connotation to sound as opposed to economical. And she said, no. And thus began the disparity between all the Ford employees and how they all pronounce Eco or Echo. I personally go for EcoBoost as it sounds cooler. Yeah, I go for Eco too because it sounds like economy, ecology. That's what I think they want yeah, instead of it, repeating right, sound. I think that's true. And echo is just something I, I hear more often, so I'm used to saying Echo. Or more than once. Get yeah. Echo? Oh, that's it. Yeah, it's I'm here all night. I eventually get trained to all the proper terminology for the manufacturers. So how's it feeling now? This truck has a built-in brake controller, which is nice, right, Ken? You can just move that little switch back and forth and let the uh, gain go up and down as you need it. Exactly, and it also means that the sway control can run off of it automatically off your ABS computer, so you got that uh, that safety factor involved. Yes, yeah, integrated brake controller is nice. How about the steering? How's the steering feel? The steering is, uh, you know, what they went to electric brakes, or electric steering, I mean, the rack and pinion steering is electric, and that was, you know, save some fuel, but it also makes it very fast. It's a quick reacting type steering. And so, you know, you've got to hang on to it because it doesn't take much movement to steer the, the truck. And it's something you get used to, but you do want to be aware of how that works. Different than the old uh, recirculating ball and the hydraulic uh, steering systems. And speaking of fuel, we did reset uh, the fuel in the truck gauge when we started out. So what, what are we averaging right now? <laughs> ah, where is the fuel? It's on six. Another. Okay, we've done 0.6. Average is 9.5. Which is very similar to Uno. You know. Yeah. Right, but we're going downhill. It'll be more interesting to see how thirsty uh, this EcoBoost engine is. We've got two turbochargers, and Ford will tell you that the EcoBoost gets the fuel economy of a 6 with the power of an 8. That's their marketing. Uh, and um, we have found that it gets the power of an 8 with the fuel economy of an 8. Isn't that right, Nathan? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> high altitude doesn't help any engine. It doesn't matter what it is. It's very difficult for even forced induction. You know, there's still an issue in terms of combining uh, the, the right amount of fuel mixture to make it efficient. And frankly speaking, up here, it's nothing's efficient. Well, electric motors are efficient. Yeah. yeah. And let's face it, turbos are thirsty. Yeah. But the more are. you have, the thirstier they are. But they do help you with the air. You need oh, all yeah. the oxygen you can find at altitude. Yeah, so far this thing is driving fine. Yeah. yeah it doesn't feel to be, uh, doesn't seem to be as stressed as the other one was, as the Tundra was. Now, we're, we're staying at high RPMs because we are 60 miles an hour, so I haven't felt a grade shift. I didn't feel the Toyota grade shift, so we would have to, uh, you know, put the brakes a lot harder to get them to kick in if we want to use the transmission braking because it's staying around 3,500 RPMs. 
we have made it down the Ike Gauntlet <laughs> and uh, just fine, right, Kent? Yes, it's doing great. I think great shifting may be helping us hold there because I haven't had a break for quite a while. This last leg, I'll have to break a little more, but I think you are breaking more on the Toyota than I am right now. My foot's not on the brake at all. And miraculously, you're getting 18 miles to the gallon. Isn't that something? That's pretty good. I wonder when it'll be going back up. Uh, less. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Toyota got 9.4 on that average round trip, so we'll see if this is thirstier or more economical. <laughs> we'll find out. We're, we're about to pull over to uh, check the brake temperature. That is the next test on the Ike Gauntlet. We'll have Andre, our Russian mechanic, come and do the laser on the brakes and see how hot we've gotten the brakes. We heard that great shift there. It yeah, in. and it'll be interesting when you open the window if you can smell them as well. Because I sincerely good. doubt we yeah, will. They were pretty stinky. This thing was just cruising. I mean, it was doing it on its own. I don't think he touched the yeah, brake for a while. Yeah, it's a monster, isn't it? Yeah. 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 All right. Run gravel, so we're even letting it slip a little. All right, open the window. Let's see if we can smell anything. You smell anything? A little. A little? Yeah. yeah, I do smell some. I smell too. There it is. There I got it, it now too. All right. What's the verdict, Andre? 458. Whoa! That's exactly the opposite of what I expected. Cow. Holy cow. Wow. Wow. That was uh, like 200 more Yeah, yeah 200 degrees. more almost. Yeah, yeah. than the it's, Toyota. Wow. That's a surprise. That is a surprise. And the most braking power is on the front. Well, this does have, they all do some equalizing now. They've almost got the same size rotor. So they managed to distribute brake right. power. Right. How about the back? 451. 451. Just a little warmer. Yeah, yeah. pretty hot. Well, go get the trailer, Andre, before so, it cools down. So that does show brake distributing. You know, in the old days, it was all 70% in the front mm -hmm. in the big reservoirs. Now they've changed that. So actually, they have load sensors that can sense the weight. If they know there's a radar on there, they'll actually put more brake pressure toward the back. Even though you're naturally tending the nose dive and, and push on the front, they actually try to stop that. Now, the trailer brakes were, I remember, like 180 last time. Yeah, they're right? pretty low. Yeah, so. yeah. They're pretty low. Let's see if we got the yeah. same number. Of course, it depends on how much you had the uh, gain turned up. Now, do you think yeah. that that, that okay. Okay. Trailer. 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 Trailer 122. Wow. So, so I might not have had enough gain back there. If yeah. It's, yeah. Looks like the pickup Probably. was doing pickup most was of the doing most of the braking. All right. Let's do the fun part, gentlemen. Are we ready to head back up? Yeah, back up the hill. Oh, right. Back up the hill. Power. We, yeah. <laughs> eight minutes and what to beat, Nathan? 813. 813 to beat. We can do that. Okay, let's put our bets down. All right. <laughs> Alright gentlemen, here we are in the Ford F-150 EcoBoost. And I've got the stopwatch. Here comes the official start of the Ike Gauntlet, Kent. Are you ready? Yep. Tow mode. Forward. We're ready to roll. Alright, what gear are you in right now? Here we go. Start. I'm in second. We have started. Now remember, 60 miles an hour or yeah, as fast 60 as you can go. Right there, I'm 60. Now, you can actually stay in the other one. Well, go for it. Give it. Dude, let him go. He's right, got it. Right, He's right. got it. Get a Florid. Get up in Florid. Okay, we're not staying at 60 because I'm at 50. He's at 60 I'm right 60 now. Right right 60. Okay, yeah, 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 this is a totally different setup than the uh, Toyota. Well, you're at 60 already? Yes, we. Yeah. He's cruising at 60 right now. Yeah. Oh, my like, God. He's got it pegged. I'm idling. not big. I got a lot more to go. Hey, oh my God, you do? I, yeah, I'm only like 3,000 RPM. <laughs> yes, I'm just putting along here at 60 miles an hour. Yeah. Could use the cruise control and not even have to worry about it. Uh, <sighs> this pickup has a towing capacity of 9,600 pounds, which uh, is a little bit more than the Tundra. Uh, and um, how's it feeling, Kent? It feels fine. It's uh, you know. I'm funny, I've driven enough now that you used to the steering a little more, but it, uh, I've got a lot of pedal to go, I and mean, we could race up this thing a lot faster. Well, if those uh, trailers get in your way ahead of you, feel free to pass them, because we want to get the best possible time. Now, in the Tundra, I was floored, and I was slowing down, not at the bottom of the pass, but at the top of the pass. And what happens is, the higher you go, the less air density we have. So uh, right now we're just about 9,000. We're going all the way up to 11,000 to the Eisenhower Tunnel. And uh, figure it's 3% per 1,000 elevation. So at 10,000 feet, we're 30% less air density. 
Now, turbo is a different percentage, isn't it? Because we're losing, we have more air with the turbo. Yeah, the turbo does help make up for that, but not completely. So it does stuff more air into the cylinder, but nevertheless, you're starting out with air that's less dense. Yes. Um, so... There's still a, normal, a power loss. Yeah, on a normally aspirated car, at 10,000, you'd be down 30%, which is basically like having uh, a V4 in this case. Maybe we have a V5. <laughs> Since we have the two, two turbos. I'm really surprised on you know just how low the RPM is, and you just we're staying at 60. Yeah, that's that's one of the, the advantage of this engine. It's got the lowest torque range of the three we're playing with today. It's only a, it gets full torque at 2,500 RPMs, where you know the the, the Chevy is 41, the uh, Toyota is 3,600 RPM. So we're 1,100 RPM lower than the than the Toyota when our torque is wide, is is full blast. So that torque holds you longer. It's like a diesel, very close to a diesel performance out of this little rascal. It's amazing. Now you, I'm actually you're slowing down. Come on. Yeah, I'm kicking it up. The metal. You got a little. You got a little talk in there. You got to keep it at 60. What's well, the Well, I was rear? watching it came down and back up. We're staying 60. What's the rear axle ratio? This is 373. 373. Which I think is as low as these as go. I think that's the bottom on the Ford. They have to go a lot higher for fuel mileage. But this is the right one for towing. So we've got the towing rig here, except of course for the 22s. I don't know if you need 22s to tow. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just make sure you decide which music to put in the machine here. <laughs> it looks like we're at about uh, three and a half, four thousand RPM. And does it feel like there's more power to go? Oh, there's a lot more. Yes, yeah. I can accelerate at any point right here. Wow, we're doing fine. You know, when I was in the Tundra, I was trying to kind of merge, and I felt bad because I would have had to slow down the cars behind me to merge because the thing was just there was no nothing left. Right, I was all the way down to metal. Yeah. Of course, that means that this could be a thirsty run. We'll have to see when we get to the top what our average uh, fuel economy is. Yeah, I think you were hitting, what, 4,000 RPM more often than the Toyota. We're finally almost to 4,000 now. And if I stayed steady at 60, we'll be back to 3,500. So we've got plenty of room to run. And now we're using that horse. The torque is holding us steady, and we've got the horsepower range to actually pick up speed. Ladies and gentlemen, we are four minutes into the Ike Gauntlet run, and the Toyota did it in what, Nathan? Uh, eight minutes, 13 seconds. Eight minutes, 13 seconds. So we're halfway, hopefully, up the mountain. Yeah, we're doing good. We can, we can And still. traffic is light, so we're not having to necessarily back down. Right, and with this one, we're close to 8,000 pounds figuring passengers. I mean, we can always pass the semis with our load going up this hill. I like how he said almost 8,000 figuring passengers. Are you saying that we weigh close to 1,000 pounds, the three of us? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> well, what's, 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 correct. what's three times three? No, it's, it's two times three. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's say 750. Let's be a little bit uh, fair about that. Now here's my side note. I'm sitting in this pickup, which they all have similar city driving mirrors, not the toy mirrors I like to have, and they all have them as an option. But if you look out these mirrors, this one's a normal mirror, that one's that object that appear far away, larger than they are, and I hate those. I throw those away and put regular mirrors on. When you're backing a trailer up, when you're towing, what in the world is this looking through a magnifying glass on the right side? But that's my opinion. There you have it. Mr. Truck's opinion about... Mirrors. mirrors. Yeah. That girl's still playing guitar. Is she still okay? Red? Yeah, really? we, can, we can stop and still pick up the speed now. <laughs> uh, think she needs a lift? Well, we'll find out on the next one. She needs run. some counseling, I think. But she had a chair out there and everything else. Look, yeah. pretty comfortable waiting. Maybe she's doing her master's or whatever they call that, the thesis thing. Look at that. We've got a completely open road ahead of us. Yeah, yeah. Do you mean, should I go 80? What do you find faster than you go? No, no, you got to go 60. That, that would be fair. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it'll go 80, no problem. Yeah, we're doing 3,500 RPM, 60 right, miles right, an hour. See if it'll do 70. Let's forward. Well, dude, that was going to mess up our time, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. that's the whole point. Is All it? right, don't see if it'll do okay, 70. Okay, I'll keep it at 60. <laughs> we're very scientific here, guys. <laughs> right up. <laughs> I don't want that Russian mechanic coming after us Look, for our yeah. changing as, rules. As Nathan knows, this is real-world testing, right, Nathan? That is correct. And what's the point of real-world testing? Well, there's so many variables out there in the real world. When you load up a vehicle with your kids or stuff, or whatever you're going to do to it. Everything changes. All the parameters to your test change. So the reality is all you need to do 
is tested anywhere at any time, <laughs> you'll probably have the same results. So, you know, it, it, guys, the point is that there's never one result. There's never one result. Yeah, and I think the other thing that we're trying to get across here is if the truck does well going up the Ike Gauntlet, it'll do well towing your boat, your trailer, your ATVs, wherever you're at. Because this is as extreme as, extreme as it's probably going to get. And we're getting close to the top oh, of the mountain. Oh, the pickup he wants, just pulled up. He wants He's us slowing to down, help. Kent. I can't help it. I'm trying no, not to hit the semi. No, no. Go for it. Oh, yeah. We're passing the uh, semi. We're a minute to go. He was in our lane. And a minute I didn't to know go. He's gonna keep crap. Uh, keep like, it at 60. Keep it at 60. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be close. Oh, my, my. I'm watching the time click away. This is going to be neck and neck, gentlemen. Neck and neck. Uh, <laughs> I can see the tunnel. I can see it. You can see the tunnel. I can see the time. Dripping away. Flicking away. Here come the lights. Oh, much closer than I had anticipated. Yeah. Much, much closer. And here come the lights. And I'm going to hit it right now. Oh, check it out, Nathan. Oh, wow. That is really close. Seven. Put it up there. Five, the that is a little hair faster. Is that what it is? A little bit faster. So we're at about uh, what? What is that? Twenty some seconds. Yeah, but we did just eat dinner too, yeah. so you got that extra weight from dinner. All right, gentlemen, we have a new champion at seven point five oh point three seven fifty. Basically, this is by far the fastest that we've gone up the Ike Gauntlet and. Kent, what is the average fuel economy? 11.3. 11, an even better fuel economy. So maybe what I said yeah. about the EcoBoost was wrong. Maybe it is less thirsty. But the point of this test is, I would think we can all agree, that this had a lot more power to give. It certainly did. It did. If wide open throttle contest, this would have been far ahead. Yeah, I mean, we could have flown up that hill probably at 80 miles an hour had the speed limit been that high. Of course. <laughs> yeah, that would have been interesting. That's... That would have been interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so come back tomorrow when we're testing the brand new 2014 Silverado. Are you ready to take on the Ike Gauntlet, Nathan? Oh, yeah. All right, gentlemen, we have a new winner, the Ford F-150 EcoBoost. There's no doubt that this has plenty of power for towing, and certainly it sprinted up the Ike Gauntlet. Are you saying I picked the right truck? You picked the right truck. You're a Ford guy. <laughs> now, Nathan, it is your turn in the Silverado to take on the Ike Gauntlet. What are you feeling? Do you think you're going to do well? Yeah, I think so. I think it'll do great. All right. Come back again when we do the very same thing in the 2014 Silverado. As always, this is Roman and Nathan and Kent saying thanks for watching the Fast Lane Truck where it's all trucks all the time. See you next time. Last time on the Fast Lane Truck, we got to test a Ford F-150 and a Toyota Tundra. This time, we're going to test this Chevy Silverado, and it's going to do really well. Why? Because it's blue.